probably all seen a tabbed flyer around somewhere. They're pretty common for posting boards at uh, city community centers, schools, libraries, that sort of thing. And usually you want a part that is large to catch attention from far away. And then the other important information can be smaller on it. In the main body area of the flyer, you do need to include information that you have on the tabs because once all the tabs are gone you might still just have this hanging and you want people to still be able to gain information from it so things like when where what as well as a way to get more information whether it's a website or a QR code or ideally both in case somebody can't actually snap a picture of a QR code then you'd have identical information on each one of the tabs below so I'm going to show you how to use the templates that I have set up and give you a hint or two about customizing your own if that's what you'd like to do. Because this is an 8.5 by 11, the live text area in the upper portion of this template is a quarter inch in from all sides and all potential sides because eventually this will be the edge of the paper once all of our little bits and pieces are gone. So important, small, informative information should not go outside that area. Graphics and large text can. So if your text is meant to overlap outside of the document, then that could cross that line. Now, I have this set up as a template information layer showing the safe text area. So you can use it for your reference and then make sure you turn it off that it doesn't print when you're saving your final file. Next we have the tabs. Now I've spaced these out and left them as editable as possible for you. So the top folder is the tab lines which you can leave and print if you want. Each of these are a shape layer so you need your pen tool if you want to edit them and change it to shape and this will let you change the color of any of the line as well as the point value and the style. In fact you can select all of these at once and affect all of them at the same time. So if I wanted to have a slightly smaller dot I could come in here with all of those and change that right there. Or if I wanted to have dashed lines I could do that as well. Last but definitely not least is the information on the tab itself. If we look back at our example, it has all the vital information. Who, uh, what, when, where, how much it costs, that sort of thing, as well as a QR code to go get more information. You'll notice that on the template there is also a safe text area area indicated. This is pretty important with templates um, or with this sort of product where people will actually be tearing off pieces that you do want to keep the vital information away from where that tear is going to happen, that tear or that cut. You would basically make a small package of graphics and text to go in here and things like alignment, proximity, contrast, main emphasis, all of that applies to this one little piece, this element. If at any time you want to view your labels from the uh, correct direction, <laughs> there's a couple things you could do. You can grab your canvas uh, view rotate tool, which is a tool right above your zoom. And if you click and drag, you can rotate the view of your canvas and holding shift will make that pop to a flat area. Now you've not actually rotated the canvas itself, just the view. So we can put this back to normal by rotating it or in that tool you have an option to reset the view. The information on each one of these tabs is set up as a smart object. So you only need to change one of these smart objects to change your information. And just because I have it set up this way does not mean you have to use it that way. This is for your convenience. If you double click on one of the thumbnails for these layers and click OK, it pops up like this. And you can completely get rid of this information and replace it with graphics or 
different type pictures whatever you need to do for your particular piece of info and then when you're done editing save it and close it and everything will change for example if I change the color of this graphic placeholder and save command S and close command W all of them update at once so it'll save you a little bit of work you can use this particular template either oriented this way or you can actually rotate your canvas file itself by going to image image rotation and then I would suggest going counterclockwise so that the tabs end up on the right with the info reading the right way because most people are right-handed so this is just a natural way to do it plus we begin reading on the left so the important information should be to the left of the little tabs the other one that I have set up is set up horizontally it gives you more tabs as an option and again with this one if you wanted to you could rotate the image and have those running down the right side once you have your graphics completely ready to go and you've turned off any template lines or template information that's showing make sure you have your lines that indicate where you're going to tear or cut have those showing um, do a final spell check you can do this by grabbing your text tool and right clicking and choosing spell checking and then going through it to save this as your final print file go to file choose save as and change the format to Photoshop PDF and give it the correct name choose save click OK and uncheck preserve Photoshop editing capabilities the setting should say now high quality print modified if it says anything else pop it back up to high quality print and again uncheck that preserve Photoshop editing capabilities and save your PDF that's the file you would turn in and also the file that you would print and you would keep your Photoshop document with all of its layers in case you ever need to come back and uh, change something